Hey, what's up guys? I am Joe from Workbench, and this week we're gonna talk about how to make some liquid motion blobby stuff. All right, so we're gonna be making something like this fluid motion. And this request comes to us from William Torres. I'm not sure if that's Spanish or Portuguese or something, so I'm not gonna butcher it. But he's asking us to take a look at this dribble shot and give an idea on how we can make it. For this, I'd probably just do hand-drawn frame-by-frame animation. But sometimes when I do that, I make myself kind of a physics reference. And I feel like the technique for doing that in this one would be pretty interesting for you guys to look at. So let's take a look. This technique builds on a couple of the older techniques that we have. First, we're using a similar setup to radial delay. And then we're using our blobs technique. Not the MoBeta blobs technique, but the KFC original recipe version. All right, so let's take a look. If you remember, you probably don't, that if we turn this off, we're building this based off of a bunch of overlapped circles. They're all delayed in their movement, so they make kind of a blob when they move around. Because we're basically crushing all these grays back to black using this layer, when they move, the edges of the blob kind of move around. So this shape is kind of an averaging of what we have visible. So you can see that here we're left with gaps and different things. So I have a lot of things set up to this controller layer. It's controlling blurriness and Gaussian blur on all of these things. Its transparency is linked to all of the other layers. I have them all shied down here. And the delay of everything is also on this controller layer. I made this whole thing in Illustrator and brought it in with Overlord, which made it pretty easy. Because then I can do Command Option Home and make all the anchor points in the center of all of these things. And then I have them all as separate layers. You can do the same thing by using like explode shape layers on the same kind of shape. It might work better if you actually have all of these things as small circles in the center too. But I wanted to speed up the rendering on this stuff. Although it's actually surprisingly quick. You're going to be able to download this project, so I'm not going to go too in-depth on all of the expressions the way they're linked. So we're going to take a look at position on one of these small circle layers. I forgot that expressions doesn't run in 2018 yet. They're working on a fix for that. But I'm going to put this expression in the notes. If you can't find this code on YouTube, it's because I can't put it on there for some reason. But it'll definitely be on our website either way. All right, so if you remember from radial delay, we delayed everything based on its position to the center. In this case, I chose the origin instead, which is the top left corner, position 0, 0. So our first thing is we're setting delay equal to the slider that's on the controller layer, and that's our delay in seconds. Then we're going to go into Pythagorean theorem as always. And then we have x equals math.pow, and that's value 0, that's the x value out of here, comma 2. So we're going to raise it to the second power. Same thing's going to happen for y. So instead of value zero, it's value one. And then we're gonna get our hypotenuse or the distance. And we're gonna take the square root of that. So it's x plus y, and then it's at, that's inside of math.square root. Then our next line is gonna calculate a delay for us. So we're gonna set t equal to current time plus, then we're gonna use the linear function as d, so our distance goes from zero to 2203, which is this corner of our comp, or that far. We're gonna go from zero to the maximum delay that we have set in our slider. Then we're gonna take the current value of position for whichever circle this is, and to that we're gonna add an offset. So we have this comp.layer controller, so we're gonna get the position of the controller basically, and we're gonna get its value at time, t. And if you remember, that's time minus a delay, because our delay is negative. So even though it's time plus delay down here, it's actually negative over here. I figure I should probably mention that just in case you're messing with this and you missed that. All right, and then from that, we're gonna subtract an array of 960 comma 540. Those are in brackets. What that's gonna do is subtract the base position of the controller. So when it's in the center, it's gonna be zero. If it moves this way, it's gonna be 100 comma zero. If it moves this way, it's gonna be negative 100 comma zero, basically giving us an offset so we know how all of these things should move relative to that controller. So you're gonna move relative to the controller and be delayed in time based on their position to this corner. So as this thing starts to move, this edge is gonna move first. So we can see if we drag through. So all this controller layer does is move this way and then back really quickly. And then we have an inertial bounce expression on that, which will also be in the notes and in the download. So if we turn this back on, we get our blob. I've made a couple adjustments to the blob because this can get kind of jagged in the edges, as you can kind of see. So to kind of combat that a little bit, I've added a uh, Gaussian blur to the edges and then did a find edges to it. If we turn that on, kind of anti-aliases back a little bit. That's set to screen because what it does is give us a white version of it. So we're screening it back over top of the edge. And then on top, we clean it up a little bit again with another levels. Call that clean up. All right, and that's pretty much it. So when you're done with that, you get this. And if you want to do some kind of like frame by frame drawing or whatever, you can use this as your base. And you can add more ripples and different details to it. But you have an idea of how it should move. 
Now you can play with the transparency or the blur amount and get slightly different looks on this. This is just a base introduction to the technique. You don't have to use the radial delay with this either. You can make your own shapes and move them around, adding in your own forces as you see fit. If you want to make this more like the example, you can take your icon and have it fly over the top. And you can also put it in the fluid source layer with a little bit of transparency so that it can actually blob in too. But that's it. Hopefully you guys can use this in an interesting way. All right, guys, if you have any comments or questions, leave them in the comments down below. If you'd like to help support what we do, check out patreon.com slash workbench. And make sure you keep up with the blog at workbench.tv. And as always, I am Joe and... What song is that? Foo Fighters Everlong. I'll see you guys next week.